Hello and welcome to your first instruction for your practical assignment. In this assignment, we will, or this first instruction, we will look at Reaccess. Um, if you've already been introduced to Reaccess, it will be a good refresher. Um, if not, then we'll go step by step, again from the beginning of what Reaccess is, exactly where to find it, and how to use it. As I say, Reaccess is essentially the Google of chemistry. So I hope you find this video useful, enlightening, and as always, I hope you watch it with overwhelming amounts of enthusiasm. Okay, so how to find your access. So if you already, if you already know how to find your access, you don't really need to see this, but Let's go through it anyway again. Start by Googling um, UP Library, like that. And then the first link should be the UP Library University of Pretoria. Take you to a page like this. And then you want to go to the search tab, go to subject guides, and scroll down all the way to chemistry. It's an alphabetized list. And then Next to subject home, go to core sources, with, of which Reaccess is one of them, and then Reaccess is this option here. You can click on that. Um, if you are, are at home, then it will ask you to log into your UP account. If you are on the UP Wi Fi, so meaning um, if you are at UP, then it won't ask you to do, it won't prompt you to do that. And it should take you to a page like this. You've seen this, it may be a shock, but there are some people who are new in CMY282 to this. Okay, and essentially the access is now an option where you can draw molecules instead of having to type um, what you want to search. So let's go through a few or an example of what the access can do. So let's draw. And what I want to draw is 1,3 dichlorobenzene um, or metachlorobenzene. So let's draw in there. I want to change that there. And there are, of course, different options that you can do here. You can draw chains. Um, you can change different elements of the periodic table function. Um, yeah, so you saw I said draw. Then you want to transfer this to your query as drawn. Now we want to find this molecule. And your first option is really usually the, the best option that you want to go for. The rest you can investigate on your own time. Then you view the results. And my goodness, here you found this molecule. Now for CMY282, you're not really going to use this or most of the features I'm going to show you, but they are very relevant for other modules. So I'm going to show a bunch of interesting things which you should take note of because, well, now is the opportunity to teach it to you. So the first thing I want to show you is commercial suppliers. So once you've Googled something, or so Google, <laughs> you've reaccessed something you want to search, you can look up commercial suppliers. And you click on this little basket, you can see a bunch of commercial suppliers for this molecule. So this is very useful once you start making complex molecules and perhaps Someone actually supplies this and you don't have to make something, you can just buy it. But the reason this is important is you can actually download SDS or MSDS sheets quite easily. So you go to commercial suppliers and then you can immediately jump to a commercial supplier where you can download an MSDS sheet. For example, here I want to download it in English, depending on well, if you're Spanish, perhaps you're Spanish, you can download it in Espanol. And then there you have your MSDS sheet, so you can prepare for your chemistry practicals. You can uh, summarize your hazards, etc. It's a very easy way to, to get to, to your MSDS sheets in a natural fashion. Okay, let me just close that. That's the first thing I want to show you. Then the next thing um, is you can get a summarized list of some things like your physical data, like your melting points, your boiling points, your refractive index, your density. Um, so let's rather look at boiling points. And what I want to draw your attention to is remember boiling points and these things are reported at specific pressures. 
for example, here's a boiling point at 14 torr. Um, and this is a boiling point at atmospheric pressure. That's why it's not listed. You can see these are the ones at atmospheric pressure. So just make sure that you always know what this value corresponds to. Um, if you're looking at melting points, there's no real point in reporting the atmospheric pressure, for example. At boiling points, there is point in um, doing that. But we'll cover in 2A2 why, very specifically, something like that. But that's just something you need to be aware of. Okay, right. So now something else that we need to cover, spectra. Now you've covered NMR spectroscopy, well, loosely covered it, and you've done some proton and carbon NMR. And you'll le learn later on there are things called fluorine and chlorine, and you can actually run a proton, you can actually run an NMR spectrum of anything that has an uneven number of um, protons. Um, however, let's say, for example, we're interested in the 1H NMR spectrum of a compound. So then you go to spectra, NMR spectroscopy of your compound, and you look up, you see every axis gives you the location of this. So how do we get to this uh, information? Right, so you go here, so you see you have your molecule, you can go physical data, then you go spectra, NMR spectra, and then you see there's a button that says full text to take you to a page like this. And there's a DUI button where you, when you hover over it, you get a little hand that you can click on. And this DUI is essentially like the web page of articles. Uh, so you see it says HTTPI DUI.org. If I were to copy that completely and paste that into Google, let me just click on that bit there in the front. Then I should, in principle, be taken to that article. You see, so that's the web page. If you add HTTPI S and then the DUI.org to that, then that is the web page of that article. And that's how articles are sorted. Interesting facts. So now you know that as well. Okay. I do apologize for this thing that keeps on popping up. Okay. But it said it's in the supplementary information. And um, we are interested, so remember, we are interested in the 1H NMR, and it said it's in the supplementary information. So let's go ahead and download this article. And let's also download the supplementary information, um, or also called supporting information. It doesn't really matter. It's either or. It's the same thing. Okay. Um, if this, for example, says... You buy this article for 42.5 pounds or whatever, then it means you're not logged into your web UB portal. So go ahead, log into your UB portal, do it. Alternatively, you can copy the title of this um, article. You can go again to the UP library. Just go to the UP library, you search that, go here to Google Scholar, paste the article's title in the search bar. Search it, there it should give you an option for full text at UP. You can click that. And it's going to take you to a thing called World Cat Link Resolver. You say view full text. And then one day when it loads, it will take you to an option and you can download it again. And it gives you all the information. Okay, and there's a bunch of things that will work through this assignment with you all these instructions so that you can see how to um, understand all these aspects of articles okay so go ahead download the article so long get the inf get the supplementary information so you can work with it through, work, work through this with me so let's first look at okay so that's the supplementary information and this should be the article then so there we have the article there's the full article written about this molecule or about this whatever um, wherever this appeared in, you can read that. That's not really important for this now, but just in principle, you've now done the article. And what we were looking for is our molecules NMR spectrum. So there we see these are molecules NMR. It gives it in text, but we asked for the spectrum. We're looking for the spectrum. So here we're looking for an image. So scroll all the way to an image. See if I, there's our molecule. And there is image, you can say control C, and you've copied the image. Or something else I want to introduce you to is called snip tool. And 
of SNP2, this is a little thing of SNP2 2.0, is where you can copy and you can take a screenshot of text or text, my goodness, or anything on your screen. So they have copied that, and now I can paste it into a Word document. Um, there it is. And you can easily use that. Okay. All right, so now I've showed you where to, to find it. Sometimes in Reaccess, uh, there's no unfortunate, there's one that gives you information that says it's given in the article itself. For example, it says paragraph number this in the article. Um, usually if it's in the supporting information, they'll give you a spectrum, a nice little spectrum where you can look it up. Okay, so you can find all sorts of information regarding that. Um, something else that we quickly can look at is, let's say we wanted to synthesize this molecule. So we can go to the preparations, and there we see we see a whole host of ways that we can synthesize this molecule. And sometimes we're lucky enough that Reaxis gives us a step-by-step -step procedure on how to synthesize this well, molecule. So <clears throat> there you go, like your prac manual does. This well, not necessarily where everybody got their synthes synthetic roots for practical manuals, but a way that will easily help you. And I can think you can see the, the usefulness of this. So you can even use this in other modules. You don't even have, don't have to keep it solely for chemistry. It gives you ideas of U percentages they got, so, it can, so you can immediately compare how good um, different procedures are to one another. Um, and it gives you, of course, again, the full references, etc. And like I said, there are commercial suppliers. You can know where to look, how to buy them, how to prepare molecules. You get your MSDS sheets, you can get physical data, you can get spectra, and you know where to find your access. So in your, in your practical guide, you are then asked later on to find a molecule, name it, get some information about it, and you need to reference all of them. So I showed you how to obtain, so you need to find that molecule, find the information about it, and then of course find the appropriate reference for that molecule. Okay. So I'm quite sure this would be quite useful and thank you for watching.